What's up, everybody? I'm back with another Bible study. Still here in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 29. And uh, before I even get started with this study, I'm going to just preach the gospel real quick. God led me to go ahead and do it here in the beginning. Uh, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, give your life to him today. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. We can't earn our way to heaven. There's nothing we can do to earn our salvation. There's nothing we can do to earn our right standing with God. And everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. And anyone who hasn't received the free gift of salvation, anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins, is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death a body and soul. This first physical death, it's just the body, our soul doesn't die. But after judgment, you're either going to be given eternal life or you're going to be thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul. And like I said, God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life so we can't earn it. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptations just like us, but he lived a perfect life. He did nothing wrong, not even in his heart. And even though he was perfect and didn't deserve any type of punishment he didn't deserve to die he died for us that death that we deserve in the lake of fire he died for us on the cross so that through him where we have that death that lake of fire death removed from us that punishment for sin which is the lake of fire removed from us and we're given life eternal life our sins are removed from us and we receive his perfection his righteousness through faith it's not by works we can't earn it. It's through faith in what he did. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and you call out to him to forgive you, to save you, to change you, he will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit which changes you. The Holy Spirit changes your heart. Uh, the Holy Spirit changes your life, changes your... Uh, Holy Spirit will transform you, give you wisdom, discernment, and understanding. The Holy Spirit leads you to follow Him if you truly give your life to Him. If you truly repent and believe the gospel. Repent means to have a change of heart or change of mind. It means to give your life to God, to make that choice to turn to God. To make that, finally make that decision to turn to God. That's what repent means. And well, most of the time it's used in the Bible, it's, it means for, turn from your sins and turn to God. Turn away from all, all your sins, all your wrongs, and turn to God. And uh, like I said, if you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and, and rose three days later, and you call out to him to forgive you, to save you, he will forgive you, he will give you the Holy Spirit, and he will give you eternal life. This life isn't promised. But God promises eternal life. Through faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. We know it's going to be with him. With the Father. With the Son. With the angels. In his kingdom. In paradise. With all the people of God in new glorified immortal bodies for eternity and we can't even imagine what he has prepared for us repent and believe the gospel give your life to jesus christ today before it's too late we're really uh running out of time there's i'll also say this before we get started there's a lot of uh rumors of wars J jesus said in matthew 24 there will be wars and rumors of wars but the end is not yet. But he said this is one of the signs leading up to his return. And there's a lot going on between Russia and Ukraine right now. And NATO has gotten involved. The U.S. has troops in Ukraine. It's, uh, it's getting to be a serious situation. Joe Biden declared a national emergency the other day because of it. Um, basically, Russia seems to be prepared to invade, invade Ukraine. And all this could escalate uh, really quickly. The the U.S. Uh, kicked out 
uh, deported 10 Russian diplomats. Russia deported 10 U.S. diplomats. And, uh, yeah, things are heating up. And not only there, in other places as well. There's many reasons to... I mean, I believe this may be the rumors of the wars and rumors of wars that Jesus spoke about. That said was the what he specifically spoke about. Because we have other things happening that he spoke about as well. But let's get into Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29 is about Jerusalem. It's about this Gog, Magog war when Jerusalem gets attacked. When Israel gets attacked here at the beginning of, uh, well, 10 days, from my understanding, 10 days into the tribulation time. Basically, war is going to break out, uh, along with other things, famine beginning, and uh, a lot of other crazy stuff. But when it really begins is when Jesus comes, and a quarter of the world is going to die within that time, uh, from my understanding of Scripture. And then it really kicks off when Jesus comes on the clouds. That's when America is destroyed. That's when Israel is attacked. That's when um, that's when Jesus comes on the clouds. That's when the rapture and resurrection happens. Although the 144,000 are caught up beforehand, but uh, we see this attack on Israel here in uh, here in Isaiah 29, and Israel is referred to as Ariel. Woe, O Ariel, Ariel, the city where David once camped. And um, Ariel actually means, as we see here, Lioness of El. El, El is God. That's the name, term for God. Lioness of God. Woe, O Ariel. And it, you know, it makes sense because Jesus is known as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and Jerusalem is his. Uh, he said, "The place where I chose to put my name," and this is uh, his city. And we see in the Book of Revelation, the New Jerusalem is said to be the the bride, the bride of the Lamb, the the wife of the Lamb, or of the Lion. Woe, O Ariel, Ariel, the city where David once camped. Add year to year. Observe your feasts on schedule. And this is an interesting line. There's another interesting line in here. Um, but this one specifically. Add year to year. Observe your feasts on schedule. God hasn't really revealed to me what this is referring to add year to year basically count the years observe the times um calculate the calculate the years you know which is what we're doing right now when we're at the seven, end of the 73rd year Add year to year, observe your feasts on schedule, and right after Israel turns 73 on the Gregorian calendar, three days later, is Pentecost. And I believe this is going to happen right before summertime, based on a lot of scriptures. Or right at the beginning of summertime. And, uh... So I mean, in the next month or two, I believe is pretty much the highest, uh, uh, the highest watch time in a while. And I'm watching for the tribulation to start. Add year to year. Observe your feasts on schedule. I will bring distress to Ariel, Jerusalem, and she will be a city of lamenting and mourning, and she will be like an Ariel to me, like a lioness uh, to him. Lioness of El. I will camp against you, encircling you, and I will set siege works against you, and I will raise up battle towers against you. Just speaking about, like I said, the Gog Megal War. 
the attack on Jerusalem, attack on Israel at the beginning of the tribulation, or 10 days in, at the time of the sixth seal, at the time of the attack on Babylon, uh, Babylon, USA, because Israel is also part of Babylon. Then you will be brought low. From the earth you will speak. And from the dust where you are prostrate, your words will come. Your voice will also be like that of a spirit from the ground. And your speech will whisper from the dust. But the multitude of your enemies will become like fine dust. Said, you will speak from the ground. Because Jerusalem is going to be laid waste, going to be taken to the ground. Uh, not completely destroyed, though. But her enemies are going to be completely destroyed. The, the armies that are attacking Israel are going to be destroyed. The two-thirds of Israel is going to be destroyed. But their enemies are going to be destroyed. And your speech will whisper from the dust... But the enemies, or but the multitude of your enemies will be like, will become like fine dust. And uh, we also see this mentioned in Psalm 18. I'm not going to read through it, but it said, it says, "I beat my enemies fine as the dust." But the multitude of your enemies will become like. Uh, and I believe it may well, let me just continue I, I'm not sure but the multitude of your enemies will become like fine dust and the multitude of the ruthless ones like the chaff which blows away like the chaff which blows away and we read about the chaff and uh, in a few scriptures I'm going to go through a few scriptures the one that most people are familiar with would be Matthew three twelve. John the Baptist speaking about Jesus. He said, "His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clear his threshing floor, and he he will gather his wheat into the barn. The barn is his kingdom, heaven. Uh, the wheat is his people. He will gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire." We read in Psalm. Chapter 1, verse 4. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff which the wind drives away. Psalm 83, verse 13. Oh my God, make them like the whirling dust, like chaff before the wind. And this is actually speaking about the same battle. Um, some people believe the Psalm 83 war was uh, 1947 or, or I mean 1948, 49 some people believe it was the six day war in 1967 but I believe it's uh, also a part of this Gog Magog war oh my god make them like the whirling dust like chaff before the wind We read in Malachi chapter 4 verse 1. For behold, the day is coming, burning like a furnace, and all the arrogant and every evildoer will be chaff. And the day that is coming will set them ablaze, says Yahuwah of armies, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. Back in Isaiah 29. But the multitude of your enemies will be like will become like fine dust, and the multitude of the ruthless ones like chaff which blows away. And it will happen instantly, suddenly. See, this is when Jesus comes on the clouds. This is when 
everything happens. This is when... This is when the day of, day of the Lord begins. Tr when the day of the Lord truly begins. The tribulation, I believe, starts... I believe the first five seals open over a ten-day period. And then the tribulation truly starts. The day of the Lord starts. Um, when the sixth seal happens at the end of that period. And that's the tribulation that Jesus spoke about as well. When he said, uh, after the tribulation of those days... The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give her light. And the stars of the heaven will fall. This is uh, the tribulation of those days. The, those ten days. But the multitude of your enemies will become like fine dust. And the multitude of the ruthless ones like the chaff which blows away. And it will happen instantly. Suddenly. And uh, let me read through a few scriptures about it. Being suddenly, Psalm 64, verse 7, but God will shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly, they will be wounded. Psalm 73, verse 19, how they are destroyed in a moment. They are utterly swept away by sudden terrors. And I'm not sure if this is specifically referring to this time, but Proverbs chapter 6, verse 14. With, who with perversity in his heart continually devises evil, who spreads strife. Therefore his calamity will come suddenly. Instantly he will be broken and there will be no healing. And I'm going to just uh, continue on with what it's saying here in the chapter because... It's good to know. There are six things which which the Lord, which Yahuwah hates. Yes, seven which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that run rapidly to evil. A false witness who utters lies. And one who spreads strife among brothers. Isaiah 40, 47, this is about the attack on Babylon more specifically. I believe this is referring to the United States, um, which happens at the same time as uh, Jesus coming on the clouds, as, uh, as what it's referring to here in Isaiah 29, how their enemies, the enemies attacking Israel at this time will be destroyed instantly. Isaiah 47 uh, starting in verse 9. But these two things will come, come on you suddenly in one day. Loss of children and widowhood. They will come on you in full measure. In spite of your many sorceries. In spite of the great power of your spells. You felt secure in your wickedness and said, No one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge. They have deluded you. For you have said in your heart, I am. Uh, this is basically saying, I'm God. I am. And there is no one besides me. But evil will come on you which, will you, which you will not know how to charm away. And disaster will fall on you, for which you cannot atone. And destruction about which you do not know will come on you suddenly. And of course, most, most of y'all watching this will know this scripture... 1 Thessalonians 5.3, because this is at the same time. 1 Thessalonians 5.3, while they are saying peace and security, then destruction will come upon them suddenly, like labor pains upon a woman with child, which is a reference to the rapture, and they will not escape. Suddenly. And also... We get a look at the same moment here 
in 1 Corinthians 15, starting in verse 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep or die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, quick. At the last trumpet, and this isn't the last angel trumpet, um, as many believe, this is uh, the trumpet of God, which is his voice. We learn in the book of Revelation that Jesus' voice is like a trumpet. But it's also like thunder, and we're going to see that here a little bit later too. And there's seven thunders. And I believe, so I believe there's uh, multiple trumpets as well. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, that's why it's the last trumpet. At the last trumpet... For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. Hallelujah. But the multitude of your enemies will become like fine dust, and the multitude of the ruthless ones like the chaff which blows away. And it will happen su instantly, suddenly. From Yahuwah of armies, you will be punished with thunder and earthquake and loud noise, with whirlwind and tempest and the flame of a consuming fire. One more time. From Yahuwah of armies, you will be, will, you will be punished with thunder and earthquake and loud noise. With whirlwind and tempest and the flame of a consuming fire. So we see all all this. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the what this is speaking about. It says you will be punished with thunder. That's the voice of God. This is what the seven thunders is. Or at least part of the seven thunders. Because the first four seals are also. Uh, the, the four living creatures say with a voice as as with thunder and there's seven thunder so it's possible four of those are make up these four of the seven but we read here in Revelation 10 I saw another strong angel coming down out of heaven clothed with the cloud and the rainbow was upon his head and his face was like the sun and his feet like pillars of fire and he had in his hand a little book which was open and he placed his which was open it's interesting is this is a seven seal scroll. He placed his right foot on the sea and his left on the land. And he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. Okay. Well, that just answered my question. So it is the, this is the voice of God. And there are seven. I believe there are seven thunders of the voice of God. That happened once the that happened, I believe, at the time, based on this, at the time, right before uh like right as Jesus is coming on the clouds. Because I believe yeah, I mean the seven thunders, uh, I believe it's his voice. And um it says the book was open. Meaning the seven seal scroll was open. So this is going to be at the time of uh, after the after the first four seals are open. It's going to be at the time of uh, him coming on the clouds and everything. And I believe this is Michael, and it says the rain rainbow was upon his head. There's a rainbow that surrounds the throne of God, and Michael is going to be. This is the angel that we read about in. Um, one of the scriptures we just had pulled up. Let me see if I still have it up. No, I closed it. The Lord will descend with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. This is the voice of the archangel. And the trumpet of God, which is his voice. So, which is the thunders. The trumpet of God is the thunders. The Lord will descend with a shout. The Lord will descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel... And with the trumpet of God, which is his voice, which is also the thunders, the seven thunders. So, and at the last trumpet of God, that's when the rapture happens. 
So, one more time it says here, starting at verse 2. And he had in his hand a little book which, which was open. He placed his right foot on the sea and his left on the land. And he cried out with a loud voice. That's the voice of the archangel. As, as when a lion roars. And when he had cried out, the seven peals of thunder uttered their voices. That's the voice of God, the voice of Jesus. Which is also the trumpet. The seven, I believe there's seven trumpets. And at the last trumpet is when the rapture happens. And this is also the time of the Gog Magog War and everything. When the seven peals of thunder had spoken, I was about to write. And I heard a voice saying, Seal up the things which the seven peals of thunder had spoken and do not write them. And, uh, It's in, it's, well, it's interesting because, uh, because this is also tied in with, it says, in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when he is about to sound, the mystery of God is finished. But, uh, so this is the thunder that we see here in Isaiah 29. From Yahuwah of armies, you will be punished with thunder and earthquake. This is the sixth seal earthquake. Because, so when that book is open, there's the first five seal. I believe the first five seals open over the course of a, well, maybe the first five seals open at once. But at least over the course of a 10-day period, and the, the fifth being the martyrs, and that 10-day period is when um, that 10-day that period is the period of uh, captivity that we read about in Revelation chapter 2. Many believers are going to be taken captive because the, de the, the devil will throw you into prison. It says, do not fear. Let me throw that in there. Do not fear. For the devil will cast some of you into prison, and you will have tribulation for ten days. Endure up, and, up, up until death and receive the crown of life. So it says, from Yahuwah of armies you will be punished with thunder and earthquake and loud noise. And so let's just go to the earthquake real quick to continue... Uh, Referencing this, see when uh, basically the sixth seal, and when the sixth seal happens, the seventh seal is also broken, and the first couple of trumpets blow. I looked when he broke the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. And this is when the sun is darkening, and we see this here, and the sun became black, black as sackcloth made of hair, and the whole moon became like blood. And the stars of the sky, sky fell to the earth, and this is what I was speaking about with Matthew 24, after the tribulation of those days, those ten days. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth as a fig tree casts its unripe figs when it's shaken by a great wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Then the king, and this is also the earthquake and where every wall falls to the ground in Ezekiel 38. The sky will split apart like a scroll when it's rolled up. This is when heaven's open as well. And every mountain and island were moved, moved out of their places. Then the kings of the earth and the great men and the commanders and the rich and the strong and a slave and every, and every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. 
For the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to stand? No one's able to stand on that day. So that's the earthquake. One more time. From Yahuwah of armies, from the Lord of hosts, you will be punished with thunder, which is his voice, and the earthquake, and loud noise. And the loud noise, I, I do believe, is what we see. What we see in a few scriptures, we see about sounds mentioned in uh, in the book of Revelation. Revelation 4, 5 says, Out from the throne come flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. Loud sounds. Revelation 8, verse 5. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and threw it to the earth. And there followed peals of thunder and sounds and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. Revelation 11, verse 19. And the temple of God which is in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant appeared in his temple. And there were flashes of lightning and sounds, and peals of thunder, and an earthquake, and a great hailstorm. That's the hundred pound hailstones. This is when it, the hail happens as well, and Psalm 18 puts, puts together the picture for us. Check out Psalm 18. And Revelation 16, verse 18. And there were flashes of lightning, and sounds, and peals of thunder, and there was a great earthquake such as there had not been since man came to be upon the earth. So great an earthquake was it, and so mighty. So, back again in Isaiah 29. From Yahuwah of armies, from the Lord of hosts, you will be punished with thunder, and earthquake, and loud noise, with whirlwind, and the whirlwind we... We see the whirlwind. Uh, we see the coming of the Lord in Ezekiel chapter 1 with a whirlwind. And we also see in other scriptures about the east wind. We see about the scorching wind. If you just do word searches on, just go to BibleHub or BibleGateway.com uh, or, or BibleHub and do word searches for scorching wind or whirlwind. And you'll find these scriptures that they, they connect the picture together. With whirlwind and tempest and the flame of a consuming fire. Because God is sending fire on the earth as, at the same time. And this is what we see with the first uh, with the first trumpet. And, and right before the first trumpet here in Revelation chapter 8. Because once the sixth seal and the seventh seal open, the first couple trumpets blow as well. That's when Jesus comes on the clouds. When the Lamb broke the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. I'm reading from the beginning of Revelation 8. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God. And seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel came and stood at the altar, holding a golden censer. And much incense was given to him, so that he might add it to the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which, with the prayers of the saints went up before God out of the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar, filled it with the fire of the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there followed peals of thunder, sounds, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. So we see the whole picture here with the fire as well. And also here in the first trumpet, we see the hail. And the seven angels who had had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them. The first sounded, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. I mean, we're talking we're talking about the end, end of time. We're talking about the the day when the the whole bible speaks about the, there's no other day that the bible speaks about more than this day when israel is attacked when america is destroyed when jesus comes on the clouds to bring the wrath of god upon his world and to save his people no other day no other time is talked about more in the bible than this time the day of the lord the beginning of the day of the lord when the, this happens and it's not at the end of the tribulation. It's at, it's, it's at the beginning. This is when uh, the, this is when the Ezekiel, Ezekiel 38 war happens. And 
And Ezekiel 39 says they're going to be cleaning up the dead bodies for seven months in Israel. For seven months, cleaning up dead, cleaning up and dead, burying dead bodies. Um, that's how many it's going to be for seven months. They're going to be doing it. And for seven years, they're going to be burning the, the weapons of, uh, of the attacking armies. Probably nuclear weapons. Uh, that's what... I mean, I don't know for sure. I mean, that's what a lot of people think. Either that or it's going to be... I mean, that's probably what it is. But... Although it could be something different. But I don't, I don't think that seven years is going to be going into the millennial reign. That they're going to be burning these weapons in the kingdom of God. In, in, the, in the kingdom of God when Jesus is here. That's got to be before... It's got to be the seven years before the seven year tribulation. Although it's going to be, sh it's going to be cut short. I don't know in what way, whether it's maybe God's going to cut it down to a three and a half year tribulation. I don't know because there are a lot of connections between the seven years and the three years or three and a half years. Maybe he'll delay because because there is a delay. Then we uh read about that in uh, Revelation 10 which I had which I was reading from earlier maybe there's a three and a half year delay and that's why when Satan's thrown down he goes to war against the people of God quickly because he knows his time is short but and some people believe the time will be shorter than that less, less than a three and a half year tribulation I don't know I don't have that figured out but uh i read through this one more time after we've covered it all now. From Yahuwah of armies, you will be punished with thunder and earthquake and loud noise. With whirlwind and tempest and the flame of a consuming fire. And the multitude of all the nations who wage war against Ariel or Jerusalem. Even all who wage war against her and her stronghold and who distress her will be like a dream, a vision of the night. So, well, it's going to be like a dream for everybody. This attack is going to be like a dream uh, in the sense that if we take it back to what it just said, but the multitude of her enemies will become like fine dust. It's just going to all disappear. Basically, it's going to be like a, a nightmare for, for the, the people in Israel. It's going to be like a nightmare. And then and then their enemies just drop dead. It's going to be like, did that really happen? I mean, is it, it's going to be like a dream. But it's going to be like a dream for their enemies as well. And this is what, what it's speaking about here. It says it will be... It will be as when a hungry man dreams. And it's, the hungry man is the, the attacking enemies. It will be as when a hungry man dreams, hungry to destroy Israel. And behold, he is eating, but when he awakens, his hunger is not satisfied. Or as when a thirsty man dreams, and behold, he is drinking. But when he awakens, behold, he is faint, and his thirst, thirst is not quenched. Thus the multitude of all the nations will be who wage war against Mount Zion or Jerusalem. They will be as a, hung, as a hungry man who is dreaming that he's eating, but then just wakes up like, like it didn't happen because they're going to just be destroyed that quick. Be delayed and wait. And actually, let me... I do have this pulled up in other translations because this line had me too. Like, be, be delayed. What is this? What exactly is it speaking about? But uh, the NIV says, "Be stunned and amazed." Uh, NLT: Are you amazed and incredulous? And incredulous? ESV: Astonish yourself and be astonished. Berean study Bible: But will stop and be astonished. Uh. The New King James says, Paul, pause and wonder. Uh, 
the HCSB says, stop and be astonished. So it says, stop, I'll just read it like that. Stop and be astonished. Blind yourselves and be blind. They become drunk, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. Speaking about Israel. But yet, for Yahuwah has poured out over you a spirit of deep sleep. And if anybody doesn't know, when I say Yahuwah, that's the name of God. The name of God is written in the Bible almost 7,000 times. as four letters, Y-H-W-H. And uh, from my understanding, current understanding of the pronunciation, I believe it's Yahuwah. But it, some people say Yahweh. Some people say Yahweh. Yahweh. Uh, there's different pronunciations. So when I say that, I'm, it's, it's the name of God, which uh, in English translations is translated when you see capital L-O-R-D. It's uh, normally the name of God, but it was translated in English into the Lord or the Lord. For the Lord, for Yahuwah, has poured over you a spirit of deep sleep. He has shut your eyes, the prophets, and he has covered your heads, the seers. And prophets are seers, as Saying the same thing pretty much. The entire vision will be will be to you like the words of a sealed book. In other words, what this what what is speaking about, the Gog Magog War? Like what is gonna happen? This attack will be like the words of a sealed book. And man, I I doubt that very many people in Israel and in Jerusalem right now truly understand I mean I don't know how many but as far as the Jews more specifically more specifically the unbelieving Jews uh, I mean a lot of the people over there don't have no idea what's coming have no idea how that this attack is going to happen and how bad this attack is going to be even though their enemies are going to be uh, destroyed instantly when Jesus comes on the clouds. The entire vision will be to you like the words of a sealed book. When they say, give it to the one who is literate, saying, please read this, he will say, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the Bible says a lot of the scriptures are sealed uh, until the end times. A lot of these uh, prophecies are sealed until the end times because we can't understand what it, what exactly is going to happen until we're living in these days. And we are living in these days. And so God has opened some of our eyes to understand some of this stuff, uh, to understand a lot of this stuff. And it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. It's going to be bad. And... Uh, you know, the Bible says the whole world comes against Jerusalem. But a lot of these prophecies are sealed in here until, the, until these last days. The entire vision will be to you like the words of a sealed book, which when they say, give it to the one who is literate, who, who can understand, uh, saying, please read this, he will say, I cannot read it for it's sealed. Then the book will be given to one who is illiterate saying please read this and he will say I cannot read then the Lord said because this people draw near to me with their words and honor me with their lip service honor me with their with their words but they remove their hearts far from me and their reverence for me consists of uh, this translation says tradition learned by rote, but, lo but rote is tradition. And if you go to the footnote here for the word that's translated tradition, it says commandment of rulers. So commandments of, basically commandments of men. So I'm going to read this again. Because this people draw near to me with their words and honor me with their lips, but they remove their hearts far from me. Yet, and yet their reverence of me consists of commandments of men learned by tradition. And this is what 
Judaism is. Therefore, behold, I will once again deal marvelously with this people, wondrously marvelous. And the wisdom of their wise men will perish, and the discernment of their discerning men will be concealed. Woe to those who deeply hide their plans from Yahuwah, from the Lord, and whose deeds are done in a dark place. And they say, who sees us or who knows us? You turn things around and other translations say, you, you turn things upside down. You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be considered as equal with the clay? That is, that what is made would say to his maker, or that what is made would say to his maker, he did not make me. He's saying, you, turn, you turned everything upside down. You turn things around or turn things upside down. Shall the potter be considered as equal with the clay? God, equal with the clay? God is the potter, we are the clay. That what is made would say to its maker, he did not make me. Or what is formed, say to him who formed it, he has no understanding. And... And this is, uh, you know, if if they truly went to God about, and I'm not saying none do, but I I don't believe with the situation about the the peace deal, giving away the land, that many people are considering God or are are seeking Him, seeking His counsel on it. Woe to those who he, who deeply hide their plans from Yahuwah. And whose deeds are done in a dark place Who say who sees us or who knows us Is it not yet just a little while Before Lebanon will be turned into a, fer into a fertile field And the fertile field will be considered as a forest So Lebanon represents the world In a lot of these scriptures and there's one uh, prophecy specifically, I believe it's in Isaiah, I, that I've already done the Bible study on it, I can't remember what chapter, with, speaking about the trees, uh, the forest of Lebanon, the trees of Lebanon, the cedars of Lebanon, and Lebanon represents the world, the trees represent the nations, but trees can also represent uh, people. Is it not just a little while before Lebanon will be turned into a fertile field? And so fertile field, we are... And the fertile field will be considered as a forest. So God considers us as plants. And this is why it says fertile field. And, well, and why it also says fertile field is because this is speaking about the millennial reign. And the field is going to be fertile for plants to grow, for, for people to come to faith and, and, and know God. Because this is after the tribulation time. This is uh, the whole world, is the, the kingdom of God is going to be, be here. Uh, people are going to, everyone's going to know Jesus and, and what just happened. Everyone who's alive. And therefore it's going to be turned into a fertile field ripe for for crops to be growing and we are the crops of his field and so Lebanon speaking about so basically it says before is it not just a little while before the world would be turned into a fertile fertile field Lebanon represents the world it will be turned into a fertile field and basically right ready for right for people to come to faith and know God and the fertile field will be considered as a forest and forests uh, generally represent kingdoms and uh, 
I believe this is what it's saying. On that day, the deaf will hear the words of a book. The deaf will hear the words of a book. What the deaf hear and the blind will see is, is we're going to see right here. I'm, I'm just considering what it what is referring to as the book, uh, maybe the Bible. On that day, the deaf will hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness, the eyes and the, the eyes of the blind will see. As many people who haven't had eyes to see and ears to hear the truth of God's word. The truth of the reality of God and Jesus. But on that day, the deaf will hear the words of a book. They will understand. And out of their gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind will see. The afflicted also will increase their gladness in Yahuwah. The afflicted are the humble. And the needy of mankind will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. For the ruthless will come to an end, and the scorner will be finished. Indeed, all who are intent on doing evil will be cut off and killed. Who calls a person to be indicted by a word, and ensnare him who ed educates or judges at the gate, and defraud the one in the right with meaningless arguments. Therefore, thus says Yahuwah, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall, now, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, nor shall his face now turn pale. But when he sees his children in the work, or the work of my hands in his midst, they will sanctify my name. Indeed, they will sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and will stand in awe of the God of Israel. Hallelujah. Because the branch of the Lord will be glorious in that day. His people will be, His kingdom will be glorious. Full of people. Hallelujah. Those who err in mind will know the truth. And those who criticize will accept instruction. Hallelujah. That's the end of Isaiah 29. It's a pretty, pretty good chapter, pretty powerful chapter. Um, I mean, the whole Word of God is, I mean, every every chapter is, but I mean, there's certain ones that are more impactful, more powerful than some others. And this, I guess, would be one of them, but we see that through this, we see the same story. We see the same attack on Israel. Uh, a lot of these prophecies prophecies don't um, don't really speak about the Antichrist and the tribulation time, but speak about this main attack, this main uh, battle, which isn't Armageddon or anything. Armageddon. Um, well, no, I'm not going to get into that right now, but, uh, I believe this is at the beginning of the tribulation time and, uh, it happens at the time of the sixth seal, which also happens according to the scriptures we went over tonight. And also according to Psalm 18, like I said, go to Psalm 18, it puts, puts it together. We see the hail, the hailstones, the coals of fire. Which is what we see in the first trumpet. The first trumpet happens at the same time as the sixth seal and Jesus coming on the clouds. It's uh, and the first trumpet isn't at the end of the tribulation time. So, and neither is the sixth seal, and neither is Jesus coming on the clouds. It's all connected together. Isaiah thirty-eight. I mean Ezekiel thirty-eight, Psalm eighteen, Revelation six are three chapters that put together a lot. But, uh, yeah, it's the end, end of Isaiah 29. Isaiah 30 is next. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do another video again, again tonight. Still have to finish up Amos. Um, 
got a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of work to do a lot of scriptures to go through but the time is short like i said uh things have really been heating up as far as the rumors of wars um you know it's all coming to pass we don't know when we don't know how long but but it is all coming to pass i like I said before, I do believe uh, Trump is going to be in power when it all goes down. We will see how everything plays out. But uh, as the end of Isaiah 29, brothers and sisters, let's stay strong in faith. Let's be ready. Let's be ready for the return of the Lord. Let's walk in all his ways. Let's serve him with all our heart. Let's keep his commandments. I, I hope that uh, if you're watching this, that, that you're going to be keeping the Sabbath day to day uh, Sabbath well according to the Hebrew calendar the day begins in the evening so it's Friday evening to Saturday evening just a day of rest God just asks us to not work and to rest and it's such a simple easy commandment we don't even have to do anything actually we're supposed to I don't want to say not do anything but it's just a day of rest don't do work don't do laborious work don't do work for money and just just rest take a day of rest a week you know keep the sabbath day and when you uh when you keep the sabbath day when you uh when you keep the commandments of god you set yourself apart from the rest of the world you set yourself apart from everyone else that's not doing it and that's what holy means the word kodesh and in Hebrew, the Hebrew word Kodesh, which uh, is the word for holy, means set apart. And we're set apart, we're, we're holy by not only through our faith, but through our actions as well, by keeping God's commandments and walking that set apart life, set apart from the ways of the world and what everybody else is doing, set apart to God. And when people see that, when people see us being set apart and not doing everything everybody else is doing, but being different and following God, we're shining his light. So let's shine his light. Let's show his love. Let's do his will in everything. We're living in the last days. Let's be ready for the return of the Lord. There's not much time left. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, give your life to him today. If I preached the gospel in the beginning, so most likely you already heard it in the beginning. Repent. And believe the gospel. Jesus loves us so much. He died for us. He suffered for us. He did so much. We don't deserve what he did for us. We don't deserve his mercy. We don't deserve His His what he did for us at all. We don't deserve his love. We don't deserve his forgiveness. But he did it for us. In order to save us. In order to give us eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give you life to Jesus Christ today. There's not a lot of time left. That's the end of Isaiah 29. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shabbat Shalom.